Over the past few months, I've been beta testing all of the different versions of Apple's newest OS, from Mac OS 26 to iOS 26 to Watch OS 26 and iPad OS 26. And on the iPad Pro, it actually feels like Apple is finally letting Pro users use their iPad Pro like a laptop, or at least as close to it as Apple is willing to let you go. But the weird one is iPad OS 26 for the iPad mini. And I wanna talk about this today because it's a really weird experience, so let's dive in. Here on the channel, I've said multiple times that I personally think the iPad mini is the last true iPad, meaning that when Steve Jobs introduced the original iPad, it was meant to sit between your iPhone and your Mac with the simplicity and portability of an iPhone with the complexities and benefits of a laptop. But as the time has gone on, we've gotten less and less of the simplicity of the iPhone and leaned more and more towards the complexity of a MacBook, especially once Apple introduced the iPad Pro. Now, don't get me wrong, I think the iPad Pro is a fantastic piece of hardware, and especially with the newest one being an M4 model, it is ridiculous. I still use an M1 version of the iPad Pro, and for things like photo editing, light video editing, even though I'm not a big fan of doing that, and my personal favorite, thumbnail design, I still haven't hit a limit with that thing. The micro LED display is one of the best displays that I own right up there with my MacBook Pro's display. Everything about it is fantastic, and when you bump up to the M4, it's thinner, more powerful, and that tandem OLED display is amazing. But the iPad Pro just seems to be more focused on pros, or at least pros who are looking for an alternative workflow. So it kind of stepped a little bit, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more away from that middle ground of not quite as simple as an iPhone, but not quite as complex as a Mac. But then you have the iPad mini, and in my opinion, this thing still sits perfectly between the Mac and the iPhone, because it has some of the complexities and benefits of the Mac, like a full desktop version of a web page, some file browsing, a couple things here and there that would be easier on the iPad, but a little more powerful on the Mac, but then you have the simplicity of the iPhone with the touch interface, in this case Touch ID, easier access to FaceTime, photos, all that kind of stuff. And in this case, this one doesn't even have Apple intelligence with the A17 Pro. This thing's the A15 model. But the thing is, all of that changed with iPad OS 26. At the keynote where they announced it, they showed off all of the new features, including a top menu bar, the stop lights that you have on a Mac with close, minimize, and maximize, as well as many other things that made the iPad feel a little more like it was pulling laptop duty. And then they said that it would be available on every single iPad, including the iPad mini. So on one hand, iPad Pro users got exactly what they were hoping for. They got a much closer version of Mac OS on the iPad that is also touch optimized and hopefully allows them to take more advantage of the hardware that's been packed into these iPads and limited for so long. But on the other hand, if you're like me and you have an iPad mini because you want an iPad and not a laptop with a touch screen, you now have a lot more complexity, which I wasn't really looking for. And let me just break down what this is like to use with iPad OS 26. So first off, the liquid glass aesthetic, everybody's talked about it. I personally like it. I lean a little more towards using the transparent icons on my iPad than I do on my iPhone, just because on my iPhone, I use everything at a glance. So the colors and the distinct icons not being clear is a big benefit for me. But on the iPad, I'm sitting down, I'm being a little more deliberate. So having clear icons doesn't really bother me here, and they look great on every iPad, including the mini. Now this one might sound a little odd, but what I also like about iPad OS 26 is that if you're just using your iPad mini like an iPad mini with every app in full screen, it doesn't feel particularly different. Everything feels exactly the way it did before, just with a new design language, with the liquid glass, and personally, I like that. But there is always that little grab handle at the bottom corner, and what happens when you grab it? Well. It, this happens. You can make one of the most cluttered looking desktops I have ever seen on a display this size. This is an 8.3 inch display with, as far as I can tell, no window limits. I've opened almost every app on this thing to the point where in beta, the springboard crashed. So, I mean, I hope that they fix that. We're pretty close to the final version of iPad OS 26 at this point, but yeah, you can just open it and open it and open it and it'll keep them all in RAM until you're out of RAM and it just crashes the springboard. 
It's so ridiculous. But here's the thing, as ridiculous as this is, and as much as I don't recommend people use their iPad minis like this, there are some things that Apple considered that make it a little more manageable. Like for example, if you're using a mouse and keyboard on the iPad mini, which yes, people have actually done, uh, or on the iPad Pro, you can hover your mouse over the little stoplights and they come up at a small size because you're using a precise pointer. But if you're using your finger and you tap on that corner, they become much bigger to make it an easier touch point for you. That's pretty clever. They've also considered things like how to access the top menu. So if you want to access this top menu with a cursor, you just put the cursor at the top of the screen and it comes down. But if you want to use it in touch, you swipe down from the middle. But I'm sure now you're thinking, what about Notification Center? If I want to access that, how do I get to it? Well, you either swipe down and then swipe again, or the easier way, just swipe down from the corner and assuming you don't grab a window, you can pull down the notification center. Funnily enough, me grabbing that window by accident while going for the notification center perfectly shows something that I was going to bring up later in the video, but I'll just bring it up now. See, one of the complaints that I've always had with Windows when it's been put on touch screens is that Windows has always been designed for precision cursors. It's always been made for a mouse and keyboard or a trackpad and keyboard, and Windows has never really been good at touch. The closest we got was Windows 8, but I mean, then you were using Windows 8, so it wasn't that good. What I'm getting at here is that Microsoft for a long time now has been trying to make a point and click interface work with touch. And in my opinion, I don't think that that's ever really going to work because they seem, at least in my mind, to be functionally incompatible, which is also why when people say that Macs should have touch screens, I say, I wouldn't hold your breath and I really don't think they should. So then getting back to the iPad mini, this thing is, in my opinion, way too small to have this kind of navigation function baked into it. I think for most people who buy an iPad mini, this is not gonna be the use case. Yes, as I said, there are YouTubers that I've seen who have put a mouse and keyboard to the iPad mini and tried to use it like a full-blown laptop, but the thing is, it's missing functions that make the iPad Pro almost bridge that gap of touch and point and click. Like, for example, you can't plug this thing into a screen because it just mirrors your display. If you plug in an iPad Pro, it actually extends the display and you can have a full-blown 4K monitor setup hooked up to your iPad Pro and basically navigate like a Chromebook or a MacBook or a Windows PC. I don't know why I said Chromebook first. But the point is, you can navigate the iPad Pro on a big display with a dedicated mouse and keyboard in a desktop environment, and it doesn't feel too different, except for when you run up against the limitations of iPad OS. And as I said, with this new version, a lot of those seem to have started to go away on the Pro models. At this point now, the biggest limit with the iPad mini well, is the fact that it's mini. It's a miniature iPad. It is an 8.3 inch display and you can have limitless windows on it. And actually, before I forget, you can still run into issues on iPad OS 26 that have plagued iPad OS for years at this point. For example, apps not being optimized for this new stage manager environment. So Mac Tracker, for example, that does not scale very well on iPad OS for the iPad Pro. That scaling issue is only multiplied on the iPad mini because when you shrink it, the touch points become ridiculously small and the app itself still doesn't actually get that small. Like you can make Safari or YouTube or music unusably small on the iPad mini, but Mac Tracker just stops and it really doesn't like to scale below like most of the display still being used, so you'll end up using it in full screen mode all the time anyway. In my opinion, I think that what they've done with iPad OS 26 is really, really good for any iPad except the iPad mini. You have great window management, you actually have remembered window placement and more flexible window placement, which is something that we didn't really get until iPad OS 18, and even then it still wasn't super flexible. With iPad OS 26, it is extremely flexible now, so that's good, but I just keep coming back to the question, why did they put it on the iPad mini? It's the perfect, last true iPad. It is literally the in-between of your phone and your MacBook, and yet Apple said, everybody wants this, so we're putting it on everything. And I assume it's just to unify everything so that if this feature's on iPad A, it'll also be on iPad B as long as it supports the software, but 
Apple's the company who literally said, if you buy our newest third gen iPod Touch, you can apply wallpapers. But if you buy the second generation iPod Touch, which is only differentiated by storage and SKU, you can't use wallpapers. I don't get it, and there's an ad playing behind me now. Now, there is some good news after I've gone through and pointed out all the things that I don't like with this new window management on iPad OS 26 for the Mini. The good news is that you can turn this off. If you go into settings on your iPad, there is a section called multitasking and gestures, and you have three options. You have full screen apps, windowed apps, and stage manager. Now, full screen apps is what I would recommend if you're using an iPad Mini, just because it's simpler, it's exactly what you would expect from an iPad. You do still get the split screen functions, but you don't get this cluttered window management tool. It just literally turns it off. And I definitely don't recommend using Stage Manager because I didn't like Stage Manager when it was first introduced on the iPad, and I still don't think it's very good now. The best thing right now on the iPad Pro is the windowed mode, but yeah, just, just turn it off. At the end of the day, what I don't want you to do is take away from this video that iPad OS 26 on the iPad is bad. I think that as a general use OS with the full screen app function enabled, it is a fantastic upgrade for your iPad mini. It's easy to use. The clear interface I think is really nice with the liquid glass. If you wanna use dark mode or a tinted mode or not even bother, the redesign for the interface, the redesign for the app icons, everything is really nice. The one thing and the reason why I wanted to make this video is that you have this windowed option that in my opinion makes no sense on an iPad mini and should have just been relegated to literally anything else except the mini. So if you're thinking about using the beta or even just waiting to upgrade to iPad OS 26 here in a couple months, it's definitely a good upgrade in many ways for every iPad in the lineup and I think that it's a great overall experience just if you're using an iPad mini put it on full screen apps and don't bother cluttering your desktop, quote unquote, with these multiple windows that really should have never been a function to begin with. But at the end of the day, those are just my opinions. I'm curious to know yours though. Let me know in the comments down below. Are you using any of the current betas? Are you waiting until the official release comes out? If you are using the betas like iPad OS, are you using it on a mini? Are you using full screen, windowed or stage manager? Uh, let me know down below. Also, huge shout out to my members, the Army of Steel. You can subscribe for $3 a month. There's a bunch of options that we have, badges, emojis, you name it. And I'm actually gonna be adding another tier Soon, which is wallpapers. So uh, let me know if you all are interested in that. And again, huge shout out to them. And if you like this kind of content, definitely make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss it. And you let the algorithm know that you enjoy what I make here. But aside from that, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.